Hey, what's up? It's Marte. Welcome back to another episode of Tay Talk. I'm so excited because in 2022, I just wanted to level up with Tay Talk. And if you didn't get to see it, go see my intro video for this year. I've been doing Tay Talk for about, oh man, five, six, seven years. You know, it started in my mom's living room. <laughs> I used to take down her paintings and just like do whatever I wanted and she would hate me for it. But like, that's my mom. So she still loves me. But uh, yeah, it started there. I would talk about everything from relationships to what God was saying in my life to all the things that were relevant to what I felt like I needed to share uh, for you guys in those moments. So I'm excited to jump in today. Today, I want to talk a little bit about mental health. And um, yeah, I'm just going to jump in. And the reason I want to talk about mental health is because I did a triathlon in 2021 and it was amazing once I was done. But when I did it or before, let's not even talk about when I did it. Before I did it, like the six weeks leading up to it, which by the way, was not enough time for your girl to get ready. <laughs> but the six weeks leading up, I was really stressed out. Like I was having, I don't want to say mental breakdowns, but I was coming close. Like I was freaking out. I was having moments of great anxiety. And I had never really dealt with anxiety until I did this triathlon. And so, and you know, I was like in my early thirties, finally dealing with anxiety or here's the thing. I think I did deal. Let's go back. I did deal with anxiety, but I didn't understand like how, or like what it felt like or what I was encountering. I just had no idea. So the triathlon helped me to understand that anxiety is very much real in my life. I knew other people were experiencing it. I hear about it all the time. I follow a lot of mental health channels and whatnot, but this was the first time that I acknowledged that I was dealing with anxiety. And the one thing that really brought me anxiety was, if you know anything about a triathlon, you have, you start off with the swim portion, you do the biking, and then you do the running. I was freaking out about the, the swimming because the swimming was in open water, 500 meters. If you have no concept of what that means, a lot of people don't if they don't do triathlons. 500 meters in a pool is about 10 laps. Well, actually, five laps because a lap in a pool goes this way and then back. You go one way and then back. That's one lap. It's five of those in an Olympic-sized pool. And so in my mind, I'm like, I have to swim 500 meters in this lake without touching the bottom. Like it's physically impossible to touch the bottom once you leave the shore. I have to like swim out, go across the lake and then swim back and then start running towards my bike. I was freaking out. I had never done anything like that. I had almost drowned when I was five. And so I have like traumatic memories and then I, just the whole spiral, you know how it goes. Everyone has like the thing that they might spiral over in their life. And um, when I was doing my triathlon, like the week before it hit me that, I was going through such spirals and anxiety because my mind was not trained. Now, don't get me wrong. It's absolutely normal to feel fear, to feel anxiety, but I let it overtake me because my mind was untrained. And the reality was that I had kind of become lazy in my morning devotions. Like when I first became a Christian and the Lord really ignited my heart, I was 15. I remember being in California as a part of a youth group, like really close after because a friend had hit me up and said, you know, Marte, you really need to come to this youth group. And this youth group was just a fiery pack of people. And they taught me in this youth group, Pastor Jason Green, if you're watching this, I just want to say thank you. <laughs> you changed my life, you and your wife, incredible people, incredible humans back in little Salinas, California, where I'm from. Um, they taught us to meditate on the word day and night. I actually remember Pastor Jason one time, uh, he did a sermon. I'll never forget it. I was young. I was like 15, 16, going to these youth nights and they were changing my life because they were um, moments where the pastor would share truth, but it was like, not overwhelming. It was like very tangible. I remember one time he taught us about how to meditate on the word and what that looks like in your day-to-day -day life. And one thing he said was when you're having bad thoughts, when thoughts come to overtake you, you can actually stop those thoughts and declare the truth of God. And so he gave a pretty good example. And that example was, he was like, count to 10. So we all in the room started counting to 10. I remember this like it was yesterday. And I, it's like, way later in my life, like 15 years later, more than that. So we were counting to 10 and we we're like, one, two, three, four. And then he interrupted us. And he said, say your name. And then I was like, Marte. 
And then I remember him saying, what number were you on? And I was like, I don't even know. He was like, that's how scripture works. He's like, it literally is like, Thoughts are coming at you. They could be lustful thoughts or thoughts of jealousy or thoughts of fear. And then you stop and you say a scripture. You declare the truth. And if you do that enough, those thoughts will literally leave you. Like, they won't be a part of your life. And so, and it might take, and a lot of people get frustrated with this, and they say, that's not true. Well, sometimes it takes years. Like, for example, I remember I dealt with, like, extreme thoughts after college of just like being, I was scared about money. I was finally like coming out on my own into the world. I was trying to like figure out what it looks like to pay your rent. You know what I mean? And all this stuff, like your parents kind of like, my parents didn't kick me to the curb, but like, you know, I was, I moved to Boston from California and I just, Boston, I'm actually wearing the shirt today. <laughs> um, but I moved to Boston from California and I was like, you know, people had advised me, hey, maybe you should stay home in California. It's cheaper, and which it is, but I didn't. I left anyways because I was hard-headed, and I'm adventurous, even more so adventurous than hard-headed. I wasn't being rebellious. I just really wanted to see what was on the East Coast. I've always had a dream of living on the East Coast. So I went, and uh, it was expensive. It was very expensive. And so here I am in this place trying to figure things out, and just like literally from college on, hey, I had these thoughts of like, hey, are you going to be able to pay that? Hey, you're not going to get food. Hey, you're going to be in lack. Hey, 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 hey. I had to learn to declare the scriptures. And so I literally started declaring. I, I found out or went and did research, right? And Google is a great source. Don't ever be too proud. Like you don't need to just use your Bible. You know, if you're brand new and I have something on my YouTube channel, y'all about how to read the Bible and how to read the word of God and how to be successful in that. So if you want to go look at it, there's a video on that. I'll put the link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. And um, if you're on the podcast site or whatever, you can find it there too. But there's a video I have all about this. And the reality is, is you never have to be too proud about reading the word. Google is a great source. Human beings are a great source. God said that, you know, I think it's in Hebrews, do not forsake the fellowship of the saints. Like we're not meant to do this alone. So, you know, I would look up in Google financial scriptures and no kidding. I probably have almost every financial scripture in the Bible memorized because it's one of the, which a lot of people don't know. It's one of the most popular subjects, if not the number one subject Jesus talked about in the Bible. So super cool. I would start declaring like, um, Philippians 419 was one of my favorites. And it's basically like, um, oh my goodness, my mind is blanking. Cause I'm talking to y'all. <laughs> but when I, when I'm getting those thoughts, it's not blanking, but, um, oh, he will provide for all my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So, you know, when I'm like stressed out about money, which is a good reminder because I was a little stressed this morning about money, <laughs> you know, he'll provide for all my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And then, you know, I think that it's 2 Corinthians 9, 10 through 11, where it says, um, all glory to God who is able to give you more than you could. I'm butchering this right now. I need to go back and memorize this one because it's a bit, a bit bigger and I haven't said it in a long time. Um, but who's able to increase your store of seed and enlarge your harvest so that you might be generous unto others and through others, you will bring glory to God. That's the butchered version. Forgive me, Lord, for real. But like, um, yeah, knowing the scriptures really help you in those moments of mental health. So I want to kind of um, go through some scriptures that are really great for just um, training your mind because this is not just a Marte concept. It's a God concept. Like he says to train your mind, like, you know, and um, it's important for the walk of someone who's really trying to be successful in life, to be honest, like even people who aren't Christian, they train their minds like athletes. I was watching Naomi um, Osaka and she was just talking about, she plays tennis, huge tennis star. She just talks about how she trains her mind. Like, you know, she walks out onto her tennis court. She's listening to probably music or some kind of podcast because it's all about being in the right mindset. Your mind is so powerful. I mean, you are a spirit, you live in a body and you have emotions and that mind that you have can really change your emotions. It can change your path. It's all about training your mind. You know, if you don't train, if I don't train personally, I'll speak for myself. If I don't train my mind the night before a workout, I'm not getting up at 5 a.m. to do a workout. I'll probably uh, figure out a way to, <laughs> to go back to sleep. And I've done it. I've watched myself do it many times. And I started saying to myself, Marte, you must commit to your workout in the morning before you go to sleep. 
You must train your mind to commit to that. And when I do, I wake up and I'm ready to go. I don't even question it. But when I don't, I question it all the time. (laughs) And I stay right in that bed. So the mind is just a beautiful thing that we really do have a lot of control over, more so than we think. Now, let me be honest. A lot of us, not everybody is, you know, I just want to say that there are real things. I don't think there's some people out there that'll say, like, you only need the Bible and that's true. The Bible is, is God. It's Jesus. It's the word of life. But the Lord also said, don't forsake the fellowship of the saints. So like there's moments where you need to go get help from a friend or help from a therapist or help from a doctor. So I don't want to just say that this is the end all be all when it comes to anxiety or fear. Not true. It is absolutely uh, one of the biggest helps of my life meditating on the word day and night. And we'll get into the scripture, but I just want to say like, it's okay to reach out and ask for help just in general. The Lord will use doctors. The Lord will use therapists and community at church and your mom. And my mom has been huge with my mental health. She's helped me come out of some dark pits and your, your spouse or your significant other and your friends. Like we're made to do this with people. So I just don't want you to think that, you know, you can go about life with this, the Bible alone and you'll, you'll be successful 100% of the time. No, because God says you're supposed to walk it out with people. Read your Bible, stand on that truth. You need it. You can't do life without truth. At the same time, add people into the mix and watch yourself fly like an eagle through life. It'll be crazy. You won't like be without challenges, but you will overcome them faster than doing it alone, period. So I want to get into this. Just training your mind and what the Bible says about it, okay? So I have a couple scriptures, more like a few, like four. Um, the first one says, and it's from Romans 12 too, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be trans- transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I love this because it literally says if you renew your mind, you will know God's perfect will. Like you'll be able to test it. And so I think that's really cool because I think a lot of us, only because I hear a lot of us, mainly in my own circles, will say, well, I really just want the Lord to tell me or I want the Lord to lead me in that. Well, are you renewing your mind? Because renewing your mind really helps you to get to that perfect will of God and to test it and approve it. And so Romans 12, 2, that's what that says. Colossians 3, 2 says, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. It's so easy to set our minds on earthly things, money, uh, work, you know, human interactions that go wrong or, or go crazy or astray. But it says, set your mind on things above and and the things above are like the things of God. So Colossians three, two, that's all about getting your mind right, meditating on the word and getting those things of God, those words of God, those motifs of God, the way he thinks in your mind and so ingrained in your mind that they become the way you think and it changes your whole life. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So I love this because it talks about praying so that you will have peace and your heart will be guarded um, so really prayer, the, the best way to learn to pray is by praying the scripture, meditating on it. Meditating is not just reading. It's, it's praying. It is. It really is like the best way to meditate. I heard a teacher say one time is to look at the scripture and say it to yourself over and over and over again. And eventually you start praying it. You start saying it to God. And so prayer is a huge, huge form of meditation and it brings peace. And that's what it says in Philippians four, six through seven. And then lastly, Romans 8, 6 says the mind is governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. How do you get your mind governed by the spirit? You meditate on the word, y'all. All All right. So I want to just drive this into a more tangible thing. Okay. Anxiety. When you have it, which I did last year when I was running this triathlon on my birthday, it was crazy. Like the most anxious birthday I've ever had in my life, hands down. (laughs) I would have rather performed with like Beyonce or like Britney Spears or something like I just like the anxiety of that triathlon really almost took me out. So 
<laughs> to the point, guys, I'll be so vulnerable right now and say I was swimming in the triathlon and uh, I remember I saw this girl like cruising past me as we were swimming and she's on her back. And I was like, man, that looks really easy. But in my mind, I knew how I had practiced and it was never on my back. And I was in open water and there was like a bit of a current. So, and there were people splashing. So if you've ever swam, you know that swimming on your back without like a nose plug uh, with currents happening and people splashing, you're going to get a lot of water up your nose. It's going to be hard to breathe if you're not used to it. And so something to me was like, just, you could do that. Like do what she's doing. She looks very peaceful. I was trying to find peace outside of like my, in, my internal piece. And, um, long story short, I did it and I started choking and I had to ask a lifeguard to help me. And I just stood on the little, uh, surfboard he was on or paddleboard. And I was like, I'm just going to sit here for a minute. <laughs> and so, and somebody was actually like, uh, she's the one right here that needs help. Cause I was like, help, you know, a dork, but like I was going through it mentally. So, all right. What I did to combat the anxiety once I realized I was in it, and this helped me to not be as anxious. I didn't get rid of it fully. So total honesty, I don't want this to be like a one-stop fix kind of thing. This is a battle sometimes, y'all. This is a journey. Like sometimes it takes years. So in six weeks, this is what I did to really uh, – and I've done this other times, but I had to really get back into it. I had forgotten. Life had just gotten to a place where I wasn't really dealing with a lot of anxiety. You know what I mean? So number one – what I did is I took the fear to its end. Like my biggest fear, I was like, what are you even scared of? I was like really trying to articulate it. And this was all self-talk. And what I was scared of was like honestly drowning in this lake in the middle of Kansas. <laughs> and I was just like, Marte, there's lifeguards literally surrounding you. Like they had a boat out there of like police, like water police, that their number one goal for them that day was that nobody drowns or loses their life. Like you're going to be fine. And so I had to just take that to its end and really drive that home. And like, okay, so what happens if I do start to like drown? Will I die? You know, I really had to just think about it. Sometimes you just got to take it there and think about it and look your fear in the face and say, you know what? Fear, I know you're there and you're very real. I can almost touch you and you're like just hovering over me like a horrible blanket. I feel like I'm suffocating. But here's the truth. There's going to be people all around me who are really qualified to save my life and have done it over and over again in other situations and have practiced this. You're not going to die. So let's get, get on with it. Like let's move past this. We've looked it in the face. We can move past it. We don't have to be worried about it. The second thing I did was I started meditating on the word, which is what this is all about, right? Like Joshua 1, it says meditate on the word day and night. And you'll be prosperous and successful. And I believe that's verse 18 um, through 19. And so that is what I just started doing. I had to get a scripture. And it was just one. So when I was in the water, which is very mental because you can't hear really. You can't see a lot, especially in murky water like the lake. All you can do is lift your head, look at a thing, and put it back down. And so I started – Meditating on the word and I got one scripture and um, I would just repeat it while I was swimming over and over again just to keep me from going to that spiraling anxious state. And sometimes that's just, just what you got to do. And number three, I started becoming more selective of who I was talking to. People are not always going to be on your side and are not going to always speak what you need to hear in those moments of great anxiety or like really crazy turmoil or tumultuous mind craziness that you're going through. And honestly, not just people, things. What was I listening to? I started listening to more worship during that season, a lot more worship music. I love my worship music. I'm a worship leader here in Kansas City at a church. And so I started listening to more worship because I needed to be more heavenly minded. I needed that. And what you listen to, I'm telling you, is what you start pointing your your internal vision towards. And so the, the power of the ears is so beautiful. And unfortunately, you can't turn off your hearing. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to be able to hear people no matter whether you want to or not. You can put earbuds in, but like the reality is, is we're listening to people and things and shows and music and, and different elements in life and sh all kinds of stuff that's not always leading us towards having faith in situations. So I always ask myself, Marte, what are you listening to? Is it provoking you to have faith? Is it stirring you to have faith? And I love, I think it's in Romans 17, it talks about faith um, comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So if you're not hearing things that are 
the word of God or of God, it's probably taking you the opposite direction of faith. So just being honest. And then lastly, I would not just meditate, but I would declare, I would declare truth. So like the three days leading up to the triathlon, I was like, you are strong. Um, I was actually declaring scripture. I don't know exactly what scriptures I declared now that I look back, but, um, one of them was probably Philippians 4.13, where it says, uh, you can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I was just declaring that over and over and over again. Fear would come. I can do all things through Christ. Fear would come again. I can do all things through Christ. And so I wanted to come through and talk about that because I feel like this is a real issue that a lot of us are facing. And I don't think that there's like practical, well, there is, but just not an abundance of practical tangible things that you can do when you're really dealing with anxiety and it's like on your chest. It feels like anxiety just like grips you and you're like, I can't breathe. You know, it really feels like that. And I know a lot of you have experienced that. And the reality is is that I want you to know that you're not alone. And I want you to know that like God has a plan for you to get out of that. Like anxiety doesn't have to be your future. Anxiety doesn't have to be your life. I'm not saying it's going to leave in a day, but I'm saying that you do have complete authority over it and that you can overcome it because I've seen myself do it and you can do great things. And even when you can't overcome it, you can do great things in the midst of it. And that's the beauty of the Lord himself. It's like there will be challenges and there will be dark days and there will be anxiety and fear and all of that while we're here on the earth right now. But when you have him, he gives you the supernatural ability from his spirit within you to overcome it and to even though it might not be gone and fear might be staring you in the face, anxiety might be gripping you, you could do great things despite. So you could do it in the midst of it. And literally it could be all around you, but God is with you and he just, he helps you to conquer despite. So with that, I love you guys so much. I'm here for you. We're going to start getting into a series about um, dating and romantic stuff because it's February and I want you guys to feel... Um, I just have so much I want to share, to be honest with you. So I have so much I want to share. And a lot of you have been asking me about romantic stuff because you all know I'm dating a dude. So uh, I want to share what my perspective, my journey, what God has been teaching me in this season and all of that and have some guests on. So yeah, that's the deal. I'm so, 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 so excited. I love you. Subscribe and I will see you on the next Tay Talk.